So how Polish startups can succeed in Silicon Valley. Um, this is a slightly, just to give you guys a heads up, I assume most of you guys will be a bit inspiration. So this is a slightly abbreviated version of what I'm going to be presenting tomorrow, which will be a lot, lot longer. Um, and I've made a couple changes. One thing, are there any kids here? Are there young children? There is? The reason I ask is because I, I swear a lot, so I just have to be very careful. If there are kids here, I will do a better job. You sure? Okay, all right. All right, all right, wonderful. All right, so this is my um, this is my established credibility slide. Who am I? So I'm a partner at 500 Startups. Um, I'll talk a little bit my next slide. I mentor at about 20 plus different startup accelerators. I'm a board and advisory board member at about eight different companies, nine now, I lose track. And I was an executive at Yahoo for about 10 and a half years before that. And then I spent two years actually at a startup uh, running, e you know, running the e-commerce. Um, I was at an e-commerce startup running the online marketing uh, for them. We raised about $35 million and proceeded to waste $35 million. So I have lots and lots of, of uh, startup uh, cred, hopefully. Um, you know, 500 stars. Who here is certified? Please tell me somebody's heard of 500 stars, right? Some people? Some, some. Hey, you never know. You always have to ask, right? Um, so we are a global VC fund, and we also run, you know, I would al also argue we're probably the second or third sort of best accelerator in the world, um, you know, in my opinion, right? Maybe I'm biased, but I think we're done all right. Um, and so I've been at Five Run Startups now for about a year and a half as a partner. I run the San Francisco office for them and also run the San Francisco Accelerator, uh, the San Francisco-based Accelerator. So I've run now five batches over the last uh, year and a half, which is a little bit insane. That's about 100 in... 165 companies have actually come through my program. And I think we've had three Polish companies, actually. I think two for sure off the top of my head. One, I cannot remember their name, probably because they suck, so that's all right. Um, so a couple things. Um, you know, I meet lots and lots of companies. This isn't, this isn't just specific to Poland, but this is actually to, I think, European companies. I would say European companies, Canadian companies, Asian companies. This is one thing I, I would say my biggest sort of issue in general with companies that even I would even say outside of Silicon Valley is that they lack vision and they don't think big enough. Um, how many times have you have, you know, and this is, if you want to be a VC funded company, you got to think big and you have to have a very clear vision, very, very clear vision on sort of where your company and what sort of you're trying to build. And I think too many times people think like a little bit too small where it's like, hey, I want to be the whatever of Poland. And I'm like, I don't care, right? Like it's actually not that you're not VC fundable if you're just focusing on such a relatively small market. We're looking for people who actually think big, all right? And this is actually one thing we talk a lot about. So I just like, this side's like kind of a little bit off, but um, I need to change this. The other part, I, th I think that this is also relevant. I think this is one thing that I think in the States, I'm Canadian, so I can say this, Canadian and American. Um, the reality is that Americans are really, really good storytellers. Um, and I use this like toy story, like what a great movie, right? And do you know, I, I talk about like what Pixar and what Pixar movies are actually so special is that their story is really, really crisp and clean. Do you know at Pixar, they spend 80% of the time before they even start to draw, they actually have the storyline written up already. And, and you're like, who cares? How's this relevant? This is relevant because you cannot tell your story, like, and I don't understand it. So this is the elevator pitch, right? One minute pitch, people are like, oh, one minute's not long enough. This isn't a criticism. It's like, it's, it's, if you cannot tell your story in one minute of what you actually do, like you actually don't have it very, very clear in your head and that's a problem. That means you cannot communicate this to investors, to partners, to actually business development partners, to people you want to recruit, the crispness of the story. And this is as a Canadian, right? Like I see a huge gap from when you're in the States, it's, people so naturally tell stories. They're very, very good at selling themselves. And I think that's even the challenge in Canada. Like, Canadians suck at this. And this is also a big problem in, in Poland as well, too. And, you know, I, I get the fact that English is a second language, but let's be, let's be honest. Your English is fucking awesome, so that's actually not that much of an excuse. And so the reality is that you need to figure out how you tell your story better, all right? Because half the time I get these pitches from Polish companies, uh, well, Polish, European, French, I'm sorry, not begging just on Poland because I want to be invited back. Um, it just like I don't even know like what you guys like what are you working on like if you're pitching me at like five ten minutes I still don't know what you're working on it's not my fault it's actually your fault because you're not explaining it properly very very common all right um, and so you know this is the how I think about this, this is for Elon Musk right you know in Silicon Valley it's just like the Silicon Valley way of doing business, you either move very quickly and you work hard to improve your product technology or you get destroyed by some other company. And the point about this, which leads to this, is it's about hustle, right? And do you know, 
there's this company I love, a Polish company, UX Pin, Martin Marcin, right? Like he's a friend of mine. Like this dude is a hustler. And and I say this is less of an issue, I would say in central oh, that's that's not true. Less of an issue in most of the central eastern European countries. Poles actually work very, very hard because you guys have gone through privation. This is actually why I hate a lot of Western European companies like French companies and Spanish companies and even German companies, some state and, and sort of Nordic companies, they're lazy as fuck. And that's actually one, one big problem, all right? They come to the valley and they don't know how to hustle. They don't know how to network. This is actually incredibly important, right? What I loved about Martin at, at uh, Marcin, or they call him Martin, Marcin at, at UX Pin, I mean, he spent like nine months meeting and networking and talking every single person in the valley. That's how we end up getting raising money because the dude's a hustler, right? Where's, uh, where's the dude from, where's Peter from Innovation Nest? Is he here? Right? Like that dude is like, that you invested, you know that company, right? One of your companies. That guy is awesome, right? I'm a huge, huge fan of, of his. And that's actually a big problem. Like we have, we've had a bunch of companies, like I say every batch we have at least three, five European companies. And so I have this one company in my last batch. And just like, I've had so many conversations with them where it's like, it's great. I'm not, if I tell you the name of the, if I tell you where he's from, then you'll figure out who it is. I'm not going to say that, but it's from Western Europe. And I've had these conversations where it's like, you cannot be relaxed, right? Like you're here in the Valley, you're competing against all these players. Like you have to make decisions very, very quickly. You cannot sit here and actually think about it for like a week or even, even worse where I hear about these people trying to work on like, they want to change their name, right? And they spend like three weeks thinking about how to change their name or the name of the company. How retarded is that, right? It's just like, it's the dumbest thing because you have to move quickly. That's actually the only advantage you have over a lot of your competitors. A lot of your competitors you tend to have way more money, way more people, way more resources. The only thing way you beat them is by moving faster than they can. All right. Um, and so last of all, um, so I go very quickly. Yes, I've, I speak very quickly because I'm excited about this topic. But you know, the reality is that Silicon Valley is a mindset, it's not a location. I think Valley is great, but I see awesome companies being built all over the world, right? And we have, you know, Poland is a relatively large market. I think you know, there's so many advantages. What makes me excited about this market particularly, why I spend time here, big market, people speak English fairly well, technical talent is excellent and you guys know how to work hard and generally speaking know how to hustle i've one one of my best companies in the last batch is a polish company grobots um greg is awesome this guy he goes and goes to every single meetup he possibly can he goes and networks like crazy right and now he's raising i think he's going to raise quite a lot of money and that's actually the only way you're going to succeed in my opinion and so anyways this is like a quick abbreviated presentation uh this is basically it so i made it very very quick and i'd open up for questions i guess so thank you very much for your time. Any questions, raise your hand, I'll give you the mic. Okay, uh, first quest question is about robots. Actually, sure. what was so magical about them that you decided uh, to accept um, their application? The team is really, really sharp. They have great experience in sort of AI and sales automation. And Greg is, like that dude just, He's, he's actually such a hustler, he's annoying, but like he's sort of like, there's that balance of annoying and just sort of hustling, and he's sort of borders on annoying, but he, get, you know, he gets in front of people and he's aggressive. And that's, per, you're, you're selling a sales product, you gotta be aggressive, right? You know, so I, I think that's what I like about him. And the product's cool, and it works. He actually pitched last year on the same event. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> Was he good? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I kicked his ass. He kind of sucked in pitch prep. We spent a lot of time with him, so. And other questions to Marvin? Anyone wants to get to 500 startups? No? Okay. So I've heard the criticism a lot about European companies that they're, they're just moving too slow and, yep. and things are so much faster in the valley. But don't you think that in the long run, sometimes being slow can pay off? Depends on the business, but I think, I, I actually think like there's slowness is basically, in my opinion, a, a huge disadvantage for them, right? Your job as a startup is to iterate and get as many data points as, as quick as possible. And that's by actually doing stuff. You cannot just think and think and think. And that's actually one of the problems, right? Like, think about this. How many companies actually start at the same time in the US and Europe? And it's not just because the US market's larger. It's just, they just hustle and they're just much more aggressive on the sales and marketing than European companies. So I don't think slow and steady always wins a race. In the tech, in the tech space, 
particular winner, in generally speaking, in most of the tech business, there's this term, um, Jeffrey Moore wrote about this, right? Where you have like the gorilla, the monkey, and the chimp, right? And what happens is, you know, when you, when you get a lot of, uh, here's how it works. Uh, the gorilla typically takes 60 to 80% of the market, and then the chimp takes like, you know, 10%, monkey takes like, you know, monkey takes like 10%, and then the chimp takes 5%, everyone fights over the 5%. And so it depends on the business, right? I think of businesses, for example, that have like uh, network effects, marketplace businesses, where it's winner take all, like you have to move very, very quickly. It's about getting the users and getting, you know, getting the users or getting the customers in enterprise space, right? Like why is, who's the biggest cloud serve, you know, business right now? It's actually salesforce.com. Right, because once you get all the clients, then it sort of becomes this virtual sort of cycle. And so, generally speaking, I think it depends on the business, but speed is actually really important. That's the only advantage you have. Depends on the business, right? It depends. Don't you think there's also another aspect that, for example, when you go to the states, you really easily raise money compared to that's the not, UK? That's not true. That's compared bullshit. to you? No, I, I, I don't agree with that. If you look at the actual numbers of people raising money, um, it's the percentage is actually relatively low. It's like I think less than one percent, right? Because you go here, here's a, here's a typical thing. I meet lots of uh, lots of European companies come to the valley and they think, oh, it's so easy to raise money in the U.S., right? You show up at a cafe and VCs are waiting there to basically throw money at me. That is not the case, right? Because Yes, there's a lot more money in the U.S. There's a lot more VCs, a lot more angels. There's also a lot more startups, a lot more startups. And so when you look at the total number, the number percentage actually might be smaller. So that's my opinion. All right? It is really, really challenging. Um, we're lucky. I say 80 to 90% of my companies and my batches actually raise money. Um, but still, it's like takes, that's six months, right? And this is what 500 Startups brand name. It's challenging. And even Y Combinator, which is awesome, I think only 20 to 30% of their companies actually raise money. I mean, they're a big batch, right? So understand, and the companies that do raise money raise a lot of money. So they have awesome, awesome companies there. My next question is about that you say that uh, Silicon Valley is a, st a state of mind, mm -hmm. and now it's overcrowded. So there's a lot of startups. So where is the best copy of Silicon Valley right now? When we should go? Um, <laughs> Sorry, dude. It's not Dubai. Um, it's not Dubai. Um, it, so here's here's my here's my question. It depends. All right. My answer to you is it depends on what you're working on. So for example, if you're a fintech company, London is really interesting. Right. I'd say London is probably the place to go. Maybe New York. Um, I think if you're huh, education. I don't know. Education startups kind of suck. I I don't know that space really well. So um, I mean. Uh, there's Valley's decent. I think New York. There's a lot of. There's actually quite a lot of interesting programs and stuff happening in uh, in New York. Um, I've seen a bunch of stuff come out of Berlin as well as in um, in London as well too. So I think it just depends. Fashion. It's London and London and Berlin. E-commerce is Berlin and L.A. So it just depends. Fashion. You know, media tech is probably you know L.A. as well as New York. Um, if you're doing cybersecurity, it's Israel. Um, it's really interesting. Um, you're doing mobile-related stuff. It's probably Japan or um, or Korea. It's pretty promising. So it just depends. Yeah, uh, no idea. Sorry, uh, I have no idea. Ooh, don't, uh, don't, don't throw it. Don't throw it. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Yeah, somebody's gonna get hurt. <laughs> so, uh, from your experience, how much is uh, the technical side important? So, in the companies you mentor. Yeah. Uh, how important is the hustling part r regarding, well, compared to the technical one? Okay, but uh, this is my bias, all right? So 500 stars bias is sales and marketing. We think like, at the end of the day, I actually don't give a crap about what the product is. I assume it works. That's a basic thing, right? I assume the product is some quality and it works. The hard part is actually selling it. So like how many, how many awesome companies have you seen? Or how many companies, that's not awesome companies. How many companies have you actually seen that have like better products than the leader, but they don't go anywhere, right? And I think my bias against sort of purely technical sort of founders and technical teams is that they tend to sort of have this like the feature creep where it's like, oh, one more feature and then my product's gonna be a huge success, right? That never happens. Um, and so I, I would say, I think, you need to have some basic level of technical sort of competence. I think that is important, but I don't think that's a critical factor. I think the sales and marketing is, and that's my bias, but I think the sales and marketing and 500 stars bias is that it's way more important, right? Getting customers, that's way more important. You can figure out the product. You know, I think Larry Ellison said, had this really amazing quote, and he's like, you know, 
first you first you define a market, then you declare yourself the winner, then you build, then you raise money, then you then you basically build the product, right? Not, not saying that's the right thing to do, but he's pretty rich, so it seems to work for him. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I have a pretty huge vision, so I'll just talk to you later. Nobody gets it by now, so I hope you will. Or maybe you're not communi communicating very well, or maybe it's dumb. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I'd like to get your feedback on that. Sure. Thanks. Well, I'm pretty brutal, so bring tissues. <laughs> Right. Uh, Silicon Valley is a state of mind. It's very hard to, to do this kind of startups, right? So do you like provide any kind of support for people so they don't burn out or you know if they burn out screw them like let's let's do whatever <laughs> like is there any kind of support in 500 startups and other accelerators I mean, a lot of it's a community startups. we rely a lot on the community but right. my perspective burnout is basically you're just ma not managing your time properly and we're very careful of just like if you're if you're working like all the time and you look like crap like we're like what are you doing like go get some rest right but i think here's my perspective where i work a lot too I probably work about anywhere 80 to 100 hours a week, but I don't feel like it's work because I like what I do. And so this is actually why it's really, really important. Is you have to like what you're working on. And I see too many startups, especially now when startups are really sexy everywhere. Um, it's probably worse in the Valley than anywhere else, but just too many people are doing it because they think they're going to get rich. And that's just stupid, right? Like, because if you want to get rich, like, there's way better ways of actually making money. Like, go to Wall Street or run a hedge fund. Like, this is not the way to, that you're going to get to wealth, in my opinion. Um, but you, you know, you're going to do startups, work on something that actually matters to you and that you're deeply passionate about. If you are, then the likelihood of actually burnout is pretty low, my opinion. All right. So there is nothing more that you could do as, 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 uh, as I don't know, in, in Silicon Valley. Is it like perfect that you're doing what, what you're doing what, right what, now? What do you mean? Because uh, what you're saying is that it's like just community support, right? You don't have any structure with that. You just don't. Uh, if someone overworks, if someone is uh, works too much, uh, then you just someone will tell him for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll he see. will somehow do that. So like you don't provide any kind of support for that, right? And if he didn't do that, that's that means he he wasn't meant for it. He didn't have a good startup, right? No, so that's not necessarily the no, case. Right. I mean, so is there anything uh, you know better that you could do? Because Silicon Valley sure. is like the extreme, right? So I yeah. I, I mean, I we joke Silicon Valley is like it's like San Francisco is the Vegas of work, right? And <laughs> yeah. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's like, <laughs> Work for me. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah. That wasn't a good answer, but like, I don't think we do any support, like real sort of support. It's a community, right? And also, we mentor our companies very closely to go and make sure that they're not like doing stupid stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. To sign up with your program, if I have a working prototype, more or less, uh, <laughs> what else? <laughs> what I. What else should I do? Uh, should I have um, Depends a working on, case is it, already? Is it, is, it a consumer, is it a consumer product? Is it a B2B product? What, what kind it's of product? a mobile application. OK, so it's working product. I mean, here, here's my take, right? In mobile, it's like 10 million is new 1 million. Like, I'm not even going to look at apps that have like less than a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, sorry, a couple hundred thousand downloads and some user no, activity. No, no, it doesn't have any so far. Yeah, then I don't, I'm not going to look at it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just here's my perspective, right? Doing an app is relatively easy now, and so if you did this five years ago, like that's a big deal. Oh, you have a w app that's working now. There's like what on on the app store? There's what over a million freaking apps at least, right? So if you have an app and you have you have no user numbers, you have no downloads, it's just like it's just you're not going to raise any money. It's just like this, huh? Yeah, then then yeah, you have nothing. I mean, the reality is that you have nothing until you launch. Right? Like you're not doing a biotech company, right? Like this is a mobile app company or software company. Like there's no excuse for not launching a basic product and getting feedback and having data points. That's not our it's not our stage, right? Like that's not where we come in. Like we're a seed stage VC firm. <laughs>